stuff, what made the different uh, elements of the Nation of Islam, the 5%, the guys in the earth, the different, how did you gravitate toward different ones at different times in your life or how and why? Just different periods of time, man, as you, as you go through life, you'll go through different stages. I mean, you go through a stage when you might be hustling for a while. Then you go to a stage when you don't want to do that and you become righteous and you're like, all right, I'm going to try to get my life together. And then you might go back to hustling. It was just different periods of time when I, you know, I was in, I was living in the Bronx for a while, Cowboys. You know, I'm, I'm from the Bronx. My, my family's in the Bronx. Everybody mostly on the album is in the Bronx, so it's going to contain Bronx elements and shit, definitely. <laughs> okay. And then on the, the Wild Cowboys title track, you were talking about the only prayer you've seen is the library. So oh, yeah, yeah. But like a lot of people thought Wild Cowboys, I guess because of the cover, was a Western type of concept. It was far from, from the fathers. You ever want to see Wild Cowboys was a group of individuals that was living up in Washington Heights. I've lived in Washington Heights, met several of those individuals. That was just a notorious crew back in the day. Yeah. Okay. And then off of that, we go to a foundation, which I think is uh, a very underappreciated and overlooked album. And I think it's phenomenal and uh, way ahead of its time in a lot of ways, sonically and lyrically as well. But for you guys, that was, you know, you had been on Electra and then Loud and then going to Arista for the foundation album. What difference did you notice with Arista compared to the other labels you've been on? Well, Arista was a good label, uh, you know, um, Clyde Davis, you know, and everything. And the Foundation was a great album. I just think that a lot of it got caught up in the time. You know, when we did the Foundation, it was one set of uh, people in place, uh, you know. But by the time we had finished and actually got it out and do a video or two, you know, the label switched. Clive wasn't, Clive wasn't, he, Clive wasn't like the ahead anymore. I think it was who big. Uh, one of those people, not Babyface, but one of them people came in and took over Arista, and it was a whole a whole uh, turnover of staff. So I think that album kind of got caught in that. Oh, you're talking about L.A. Reid, probably? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he definitely uh, wanted to focus on hits as opposed to overall music. Yeah, yeah exactly. He wasn't a hip-hop man like that anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. And that album, of course, has a lot of work with Buck Wild and uh, Lord Finesse as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at that point in your your career and with Brand Nubian, how did working with them fit into, you know, your evolution as an artist? Would you say? Well, I had always worked with. I mean, with Diamond, with, with them. I mean, if you work with Diamond and you were in the studio enough with them, some you know Buck might come through, and Finesse might come through, or Showbiz. So it was. I had already worked with him. You know, it was just a matter of, of brand new being working with Poobah. I did a lot of stuff with Ness. Um, you know, Buck, by that time, Buck was, was up and coming then. So, you know, it, it, it was just a natural progression. If you work with Diamond on Showbiz, then you work with Finesse and Buck. You know, being at, a, at, at times, they might all be in the studio. It might not all be their track, but they there. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it, in the next couple of years, then there's like a real explosion for you of solo material. Uh, starting probably in around 2005-ish. So what what happened to where you were like going from not putting out as much to really pretty steadily putting out material every year? Well, I wasn't on no major label no more, so I didn't have to worry about getting cleared, waiting to get cleared. Um, that was the big boom of, of a lot of independent labels was coming out. And I just, and I had the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? I I, I was in the right place at the right time. And it was just, you know, I, I had the opportunity to do it, and, that's, and I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of those projects, The Black October, I really liked uh, Eternally Yours in particular, that record. Um, so that one, it kind of had a lot of introspection on it in particular. So what do you find differently, creatively, uh, brings out that element of you as a writer? I'm um, just going through life experiences, man. I'm able to transcribe it. A lot of people are not able to transcribe it like that. The way I, the way it happens for me, I, I can just I have a, I guess I have the gift, a gift of being able to, you know, put make it be make make it make people visualize what I'm saying. And it's just regular stuff that 99 99 percent of the world is regular people. You got an element maybe of of a one percent, two percent who who is uh 
who are, who are able to be so-called superstars or live a certain way. But most of the world is uh, is made up of working people, and uh, you know that's what basically it is. I'm it's, it's it's able to reach people who go to work, who come home, who have a beer. You know, what I'm saying nine to five people, as well as people you know, who, superstars or whoever hang out. But it's 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 for the common man. Okay. And then uh, with the brand new being, I did uh, I'd always really liked uh, your collaboration with Craig G on the lyrics. Yeah. And that's uh, something that I wanted to ask you about in the sense of you have a very particular style. So why why do you think maybe you're not looked at more when the, the elites are discussed? Because, you know, if, the, uh, if you look at a lot of the elites, it's all, they all like have the same rhyme pattern or the rhyme style and it's, it's more comprehensible. You know, they, they, they're willing to, 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 to go with, with what were basically what's more popular at the time. You know what I'm saying? I, I go with me, I go on the gut. I, I gotta go with, like, I, I might, I, I, I can't rhyme, rhyme on the beat just because somebody say, yo, this is popular. I gotta actually feel the beat. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of, you know, I guess the elite are able to, you know, do that with the masses. Plus, they're, they're, um, they're probably easier to follow, you know, as far as hearing the lyrics and, you know, a lot, probably it's a lot simpler patterns to also follow. So how did you, how and why did you develop the styles that you have? It just came. I, it was no way, it's, it's not like I sought out to develop it. Basically, it's just how it came out. It's, it's, I think a lot of times it's how I think. My, my thinking comes, especially when I'm rhyming in verse, and I got to write it as verse. You understand? Like, it, it doesn't come in one long, flowing thing. Like, when I get thoughts and especially for rhymes it's like jagged pieces shooting here shooting this saying this saying that and that's the way and a lot of times i've been trying to get it out and write it so fast so i don't lose it that that's how it comes out a lot of time a lot of times i you know when i'm reading especially if i didn't have on my glasses you know i might have meant to say a whole long piece but i couldn't see it and i had to say the pieces that i saw and a lot of time that's how it came out and do you still write with pen and pad yeah, all the time. I got various notebooks all over the house. Mm -hmm. All the time. Wow. Okay. And then I know you have uh, the new project with Agala. Yeah. So the guys have arrived. So um, that one, I think, has a lot of uh, great material on it, too, with Praise the Lords, with Greg Nice in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, that one recently came out. And, uh, you know, that refers to his uh, lyrics from Dwick, of course. Yeah. But, but for you, what type of energy do you notice when Greg, when you do a song with Greg Nice that, that he brings? Oh, well, Greg is Greg. Like, I know Greg. Greg is a good friend. So, so I like, I, I, I already know Greg. I know what he's going to do. And, you know, I, 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 know, I know how he moves. I know his ambiance. And it was good. Same with Aguilar. Like, I came up with Aguilar. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I've known Aguilar since I lived in Harlem. And, uh, you know, it was it, on this album, it, if, if, if if you'll notice, these songs had a lot of topics on it, and, and like I really wanted to take my time and draw some meaning into these songs. And I said on this one, you know, I wasn't gonna be rhyming just to be rhyming. I wanted just to each each verse on something to tell a story of what's going on. Yeah, it's very uh, topic driven, and you even reference you know back when he was known as Adolf. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what made you guys connect from way back in the day? Do you think? Well, I, I had known Aguilar. He always lived in close proximity when I was in Harlem. He was in Harlem at the time in the Bronx. And, uh, you know, I always ran into him in certain places. You know, we had collabed in the past on certain things. And I always liked this beach, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we had been talking about it for a while, but, like, uh, during this spring, and it didn't take us long, maybe two months to get it together. You know, we, we, we said we we're, we're going to get this together. We're going to make something topical, you know, for the times. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I wanted to... At, at, I wanted to make something during these times that meant something because, like, at these times right now, nobody's really flying around doing shows. Uh, it's not a lot of glitz and glamour going on right now. Basically, everybody's in the crib reflecting, trying to survive, trying to think of something positive to get through. And that's what I wanted to reflect on this album. Like, you ain't hear me talk about popping no bottles and doing none of that because it wasn't none of that. I'm in the crib every day. I'm wearing a mask. I'm, I'm running around washing my hands a million times a day trying to stay alive right 
So then what, what's the meaning behind the title, The Gods Have Arrived? That means that we back, man. We, we, we've arrived, man. The gods have arrived. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they say it's time for, you know, when we're in, t- in, the, in the time of needs, it was going to be a savior to come. Well, hopefully this record right here will reflect and be a savior for somebody. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 like we were saying, if we're waiting for Jesus, now would be a good time for him to arrive. But if he ain't going to do that, we'll hold it down for some of our people in the meantime. Gotcha. And one of my favorites on there is the universal law. And yeah. I really liked on there how you were talking about uh, potentially different jobs you could have had with being a dentist. Yeah. And I could have been a dentist, you know what I'm saying? I'm certain. I, I could have been a fireman. You know, I passed the fireman test for Nurochelle. So, you know, it's like, you know, life takes strange turns. I mean, you know, who, who I, I was wondering, what if I would have been a fireman right now? I would have probably been retiring around now. You understand? With a, with a pension and everything. You know what I'm saying? Or if I'd have, you know, been a dentist. You know, I might have had three or four practices. But I'm satisfied with what I got. I, the, the, the riches of the mind. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I have a home. I, I'm healthy. You know, I got a new baby daughter coming, which is a late blessing for me in my life. And, uh, you know, I, I feel good. Well, congratulations on your daughter. Thank that's you. A, that's a beautiful thing, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I got one daughter. And now... 27 and i'm having another one 27 years apart you know it's it's an odd thing but it's a great thing man it's like a like a it's, it's like a blessing for me man I'm, I'm totally 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 overjoyed at that be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by soren baker he's official history of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with ice t snoop dogg mc ren the doc and dozens of others the history of gangster rap a definitive look at how los angeles changed rap forever in los angeles the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. A 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.